Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck hit straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes for ourselves to understand about this practice. Because the clarity that you have within yourself is very important when it comes to meditation. Otherwise, you may keep practice and you spend so much time, effort, but end of this all, if you don't get any result, that is not good. So that's why every day we bring different, different explanations and we try to open different windows to understand for yourself how you can develop you are in a wisdom and how you can bring and put more effort on your practice because this is a method that you you have to gain the the result by your own practice in day to day life we used to live our life depending on others depending on things but this is not like that. This is about your own behavior, your own attitude, your own mind. This is about your own character. And at the same time, there is a Dhamma also. We, we may never knew before. So that's why we need to learn the Dharma. Why? Because otherwise, it's, it's kind of like if your address is wrong, just imagine. You, you have the best car and you have the, the all other comfortable roads. But still, if you have the wrong address, how it doesn't matter how fast you go. It doesn't matter how long you go. Still you're going to end at the wrong place. So then you, it is your responsibility look into yourself and see where you are heading. What you want out of this all. Out of the practice, what we look for. Are you looking for truth? Are you want to gain more clarity to yourself? Are you want to bring a more better person within yourself? You are, are you want to lift you to a more better version? So you have to have a very clear idea about it. 
And once you have it, from the top of that, you can build up little by little, little by little, the practice. So when it comes to meditation, before you're going to build up your life in any direction, it doesn't matter towards the enlightenment or the towards the peace and harmony, tranquility state, or even your personal success or your next version or your higher version. It doesn't matter whatever that you look for. The very first thing that you have to re remember that all depend on your thoughts. All depend on the condition of your mind. And if you, so once you know that, you, you should not go with the comparison. You have to more look into deeper yourself and see and brush up and become very clear and clean within the condition that you, you go through. If you go with the comparison and look always outside and start to look, oh, I won't be like that. I want to be like that. For, for, from the beginning, it is okay. But on the, the way, it's it not going to help for you because you can't become anybody like that. So then you have to come to a point to understand how you brush up yourself rather than become someone. Looking from outside, you, you can't be a kind of like a photocopy. So you have to have your own inner version. So, so for that, you have to look into you. And the comparison is one of the barriers that we have. Because with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, through this information, we condition that all and from we from our childhood, our through our culture, tradition, school system, our family background, we condition our thought pattern. So it's it's kind of like a, we program our thoughts. So now you have to be very careful and whatever that you think. Maybe it come out of that as a result of that program mind. So then it is very difficult for you to find the freedom from your own barrier or from your own program. So that's why the meditation giving you a kind of like opportunity for yourself without becoming a bias, becoming, without becoming a debtor to your own mental program now you can see and observe and recognize your own thought patterns. That is where you find the freedom. So otherwise, most of the time in day-to-day -day life, we behave, we react as a result of this program mind. Another thing is, the worst thing happened we are appreciating that program we already run through ourselves. And now the people reward us. We appreciate ourselves. And we validate it again and again and again. And as a result of that, what happens, you start to repeat it rather than get out of it. So this is, the, this is what called the sansara or the conventional life. We go with the program mind and then we appreciate it and we repeat it. So then, how are you going to find out something new? Maybe for the moment you think you're gaining something new, it's come as a result of program mind. So the meditation is completely go backward completely go to the beginning. So that is what the tranquility state. You go to the beginning point and start to observe that. And when you observe that, you recognize the, the very nature of the mind. So recognizing that nature of the mind is the solution for this all. And recognizing who you are 
and recognizing you are complete make you free. So there was a, a, a crow, a raven, and it used to stay in one tree and there was a monk under that tree used to, <clears throat> sorry, so used to practice meditation. And uh, so this raven every day looked this monk and so calm, relax, you know. And one day this raven start to think about itself and, you know, no one appreciate me. I am dark and uh, I have no life, you know, and um, I don't have someone around me. So like that felt kind of like so sad about it. And then start to cry. So tears fell down and then uh, the tears came to the monk head. And the monk asked from this raven, so what's going on? What happened to you? Why well, you are crying? So then the raven told, Oh, look at me. You know, no one appreciate me. No one uh, try to accept me. Can you make me like a beautiful bird? So then the the monk asked, what do you want? What kind of picture you like? So then there was a close by, there was a little lake. In that lake, there were swan. So this uh, raven tall, oh, look that swan. It's uh, so beautiful, so white. And sometimes people come and watch. And uh, the monk told, it is better, I can make you like that, but it is better you go and ask, have a conversation and get a very clear idea. So then this raven went to the son and asked, oh, my friend, how about your life? Oh, then this son start to complain, oh, I am so tired about this, my life. I asked, why? What? Because I'm so white. Look at me. I am get depressed. You know, no any colors with me. And so, and then the raven asked, is there any that idea about uh, that life or do you have, have you ever met anybody kind of like? Now slowly he back, you know, withdraw his idea to become a son. And then, not all, oh, you remember, uh, there is a parrot. I, I saw one time, and when I saw that day, I thought, oh, I want to become like that because it's so beautiful, nice colors. You know? And uh, the raven thought to go there. Oh, then now he give up becoming a son and start to look for the, the parrot. And he found the parrot. It's kind of like the parrot always like, uh, you know, have the fear. And the raven asked, why, why are you so stressful? You know, why are you so afraid? And are you not happy? So then the parrot told, you know, because of my colors, I don't care my colors, but uh, some other people care about it. And always people try to catch me. You know, I'm in a very danger. You know, so I, I, I always have the fear in me. Somebody will come and get me. So the raven give up that idea also and ask, is there anyone you met in your life? Just try like becoming happy, you know, have a nice life. And then the parrot told, Oh, I saw one day the peacock look so beautiful, many, many colors. And then the early morning, evening, and opening all the feathers and dancing. 
then saw the raven now slowly back up his idea give up his idea becoming a parrot and start to look for the the peacock and then he went uh, looking and then he found the peacock but it was a zoo and the people came to watch this peacock and uh, everybody gathered and laughing and uh, the crow thought oh look at this a lot of people a lot of very crowd and a lot of people come and try to see this peacock oh maybe that's mean it is so valuable and the peacock having good time because it's like always like a party you know and uh, somehow in the evening when everyone left so the peacock uh, the raven slowly went to this peacock and asked my friend you are having so much fun huh all oh, look at the the lot of people here that all came to see you and then the peacock told oh i am suffering here you know because of my this beauty because of this colors sometimes people come and you know try to pull my feathers it is very painful and i am in a cage i can't go anywhere i am a prisoner they come and they look at me and they enjoy and they go i am here a prisoner and uh, then the the raven asks is there any time in your life you met someone and kind of like having happy life and having freedom then the peacock told i always think about to become like you because i went sometimes you know i had an opportunity to go around this zoo and in each and every cage i look there are different 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 animals birds but i never saw in any cage they put a raven and by hearing that the raven understood what is the meaning of freedom in life and what is the meaning of bliss so it thanked to the the peacock and went back to the went back to the monk and the monk asked how did you find what you want to be and the raven told this is very good for me i am so happy about me so sometimes in our life we we also same like raven we look here and there and we forget who we are and we forget what we have and we always dreaming 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 but we have no idea about what is happening there so that's why most of time for ordinary people until they lose what they have they never understand the value of that it's regarding our life it's regarding our material things even it it's regarding our mental condition even so that's why you have to look into yourself when you look for something you have to have a very clear understanding and idea why you want it and out of that what you can do so once you have that then you go for it work for it so when you work for that the very first thing that you have to remember to see the condition of the mind because the that the recognizing these thoughts is very important our mind our thoughts is kind of like always clouds it's come and in its go so meditation give you a opportunity to observe it little bit without going with so this conditioned mind this conditioned program perception and sometimes we misunderstand so one of the thing is 
this impermanence things we take as permanent even before it appear to us we have mental state about it thinking it is permanent see even we we never see it we never came to that that much sometimes we understand wrongly about the the things i repeat it again even before it appears to us if it is not the kind of like even in front of you we have under, we have kind of like a believing that going to be permanent another one is it is before it come to us it's somewhere you dreaming tomorrow day after tomorrow next year or you dreaming about it. and you think it going to give you complete permanent happiness and satisfaction and be, even it is not close to you it is far away from you you are dreaming about it but it still you think it going to be yours another thing is it is happening in your mind manifesting with the thoughts it's it's a it's a result of visualization or the dreaming you experience right now right here but still you believe there is something exist as real you, you don't see it is in your head happening within the the thoughts you think there is something exist outside those are the four things it's kind of like a barriers and hold us and giving the wrong direction wrong address so if you have that four things remember the, your journey going to be wrong you going to stop somewhere wrong you will it doesn't matter how fast the how nice the vehicle that you go and whatever the, the road you take is still end of that all you not going to come to the destination what are those it's not about in front of this you know in, in whatever in front of you that, that, that is what you have to understand not that whatever in front of us that we can at least see and recognize but what happening in us even it is not in front of us it is far away from us and we never saw it and one thing we believe there is something and it is permanent and there is something it going to bring the complete happiness and satisfaction there is something it is mine another thing is there is exactly something like that exist but that all four things conditioned by the mind happen in your mind so when that comes to you if you are capable to observe it little bit and then you recognize whatever the that you experience and slowly change within you and you observe little by little little by little and rather than go with it cherish it hold it with undisturbed mind with the solid mind once you observe the the, the thought pattern you are capable to go a little bit more deeper so what happen when you go deeper so now in your mind you know there is something so it is a thought now you go a little bit deeper little bit deeper and once you go to the bottom you recognize there is nothing there is nothing like that 
So that's why it's just observing, looking outside, investigating the world. You can't recognize this emptiness. It can recognize only by seeing deeper your own thoughts. So that is a kind of like a shifting. You go into the different dimension, different level. It's, it, it, it happened, you know, and the people, like if I give a very common example, how people shift their understanding, like, when they recognized that germs, in the beginning, people had no idea about germs. And they go to the war and as a, uh, like a First World War, Second World War. And when they wounded, the soldiers wounded, they bring back. And even they bring back this wounded people, soldiers, they die. They, so then the, they couldn't understand how it is possible because more than the battlefield, the people die here. These wounded people die. So why it happened like this? Then they found out it is germs can kill the people. So it, it's completely shift their understanding about this body. And from the beginning in the ancient time, and there were time period, the most of time when the, when the delivery happened, the mother and the baby both died most of time. They didn't know why. And they used to think about it as kind of like an evil eye, you know, people did something bad, or kind of like that. And but then later they found out the doctors, whoever help or the mother and the baby, they don't wash their hands. And because of that, the germs go and it kill the mother and the baby. And with that, they came to the, the understanding of oh, these germs. But the very funny thing is, when, it, when they told it to the doctors, they got so mad. They told it cannot happen. And they refused to, to wash hands. They didn't, they didn't accept it. It can be like that. See that. It, what we think is totally different story when we come to clear understanding. So that means that in day-to-day -day life, if you are not looking to yourself and see, when especially when things go wrong, when you experience something, rather than hold it to it, clinging to that, you have to detach from the, the situation and look into the situation. That is very, very difficult to do. Detach from the situation and look into the situation. Like wine tasting people because they have ability rather than go with the taste, detach from the taste and but still to look into that. Like a tea tasting, wine tasting. They are, they are not, the, the taste cannot catch them. And they, they are so detached from that, their own experience and that's where they observe what they go through. But for us, in day-to-day -day life, we have no ability even regarding our body-mind, this moment of experience, to see like that way. So, through the meditation, with the tranquility meditation, what you can develop as a skill, you're not going to, to go with the, the moment of experience. You slowly stay away and allow your thoughts to come and go, come and go. You are not interfering to that. 
So in that solid observation, you can go deeper, deeper, deeper and understand. This is whatever thoughts. In the bottom of that, it is empty. So once you recognize, you're not going to have this, this craziness, this cravingness regarding your own thoughts. That is where you gain the freedom. Because once you have it, your own mind, that your own emotions, your own thoughts, your own program, your own habitual patterns can't hold you. Now your awareness is more sharp, stronger than that thought patterns. So that is where you gain the freedom. In a very conventional life, if you have that ability, little by little, you can develop it, you can gain it. So by the time, what will happen? Anymore, you are not disturbed out of your own thoughts. You have, you have the peace, harmony, tranquility state within your own mind. So that is the foundation. Go deeper into to vipassana level. So in the vipassana level, you, you have now ability not to disturb out of your own experience. So now you see everything has a kind of like a connection. So that means what you experience is not an independent moment of experience. What you experience is result of something. So then you, you have ability to look back, go behind it. Then you once you go there, you recognize there is something behind, something behind. And then you understand this all we experience as a result of causation. And that the causation is related to the nature. It's not belong to anybody. So that is where you become more careful about your own life. Because now you recognize you are, resu you are a result of many reactions. So once you know that, you can slowly change the direction that wherever you're heading. And then you understand cause and effect. So you're not going to challenge for anything then, thinking this is my life or kind of like that. Hum you humbly start to accept. And that is where you you start to become harnessed with the nature, go with the nature, accept and respect, and you become more humble with the situations. Why? Because you know it is not a person. It, it is a result of many things. So with other people also, that once you understand that within yourself, you are capable to understand within others. So then you understand when whatever the other people whoever the people, they are not independent existence. They are also result of like you. So once you have that wisdom, you, you, it, it's kind of like you're going to have a paradigm shift. You completely go into different level of understanding. Like that, that the people understood about the germs. Then your behavior is going to become different. Then you have more deep understanding when things happen, why it happens. So like that, you transform. So this your inner behavior. When you have the ability to transform your inner vision, that's give you the true freedom. So look into that then. Go deeper into you. And don't try to do anything. Just try to observe and recognize it is just a moment of experience and the depth of this. You can see only the emptiness. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. And your right palm on your left and neck, head straight in one line. And be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself. 
and say so patveva or may I be well and happy three times. And take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens to the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra. Keep an unmovable posture. And if your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. Don't react to any thoughts. Just allow any thoughts or experience to come and go. But observe yourself and see how it changes.
bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, Visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. and to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself May all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibban. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha mehi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe tatta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma patipati ya buddham puje mi dhammam puje mi sangham puje mi Adhaya imaya patipati ya jati jaravya di maranam ha paribunjisami Idam me punya kamanga savakaya vang humutu sabadukka pamunchatu Bless you.